Dustin Fletcher started his AFL career as a shy, spindly 17-year-old schoolboy. It was to be 23 years before he finished the longest career in VFL-AFL history. Welcome, Dustin. Thanks for having me, You don't look like you've let yourself go, mate. You must have blown out to about 80 kilos, have you? No, I think I've gone from 92 in my last couple of years playing weight to about 94 and a half, so... 94 and a half at 6'5". Two, two and a half kilos, yeah. yeah What's the highest... What was the heaviest you were? Oh, believe your... it or not, I got up to about 101, so I just got over 100 probably back in the in the days, probably his days too, back in, you know, when you were talking to Alistair Lynch and, and if, trying to play on a few of those big So that boys. was deliberate? Oh, yeah, deliberate, yeah, you know, yeah in, in a sense, and... Um, but I, yeah, I got down to 92 for probably the last really 10 years of my career was, you know, your weight dropped and you, you try to stay mm. in the, out in the park that way. I want to take you back to first game, round two, 1993. You were named on the bench in that team, weren't you, in the Essendon team? Yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah? You ready to run out on the ground? And the master coach, Kevin Chitty, had a word to you. Yeah, he did. He popped his head round the corner um, and said, um, you know, that Thursday night he said, we're going to start you on the bench um, as a game, the heat goes out of the game, half forward, half back flank, we'll see, you know, whichever's best. I thought, beautiful. <laughs> ran, but down the race, just before he ran out, popped his head round and said, oh, he goes, I'm going to start you in the ruck today. I thought, oh, here we go. So, obviously, Justin Madden was the um, opposition ruckman against Carlton and, um, yeah, and the rest is history, I suppose. I think I got my hand on that, that first knock. You're a schoolboy, suddenly you're getting changed amongst Watson and... Harvey and all the famous names at Essendon. How'd that feel? Oh, it is nerve-wracking because, you know, that first year of my contract, I signed actually just to play school football, to play in the AGSV competition for Essendon Grammar and to play reserves, to play eight games. So I was going to play my 20 games that way, but um, that all changed. And, um, you know, pre-season of 92, um, you got used to it pretty quickly that you're in the change rooms with, you know, Watson, Salmon, mm. Harvey the blokes you mentioned and, and I'd known these guys in, in, in a different way since I was a kid too yep. so you probably felt like you had a sort of a relationship with them but um, you know it wasn't that relationship you know being out there on the ground and, and playing with them. 1993 an amazing year for you you were at school you suddenly get a taste of league football and come September you're playing a premiership team. Yeah it's... 18 year old in a premiership team you played in the grand final on Stephen Kernahan? Yeah I did yeah. 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 And, and again, um, for me, just to be playing, you know, AFL that year, um, obviously the year of the baby bombers, you know, Joe Mercedes, Mark McCurry, James Hurd, Gavin Wanganeen. Um, we probably didn't think, you know, we didn't start that year that well, I don't, you know, from memory. And, and even for me, it was back to when Sheeds did ring me up and say, you know, you're, you're going to be playing this week. Um, he pretty much, on that, even on that phone call, said to me, you know, you're not here just for one game. Um, you're here for a long time and not only to play footy, we wanted to play finals and grand finals. And I was happy getting a game. You know, you got a thousand bucks a game. You know, I was still at school <laughs> and that was that. But, That's uh, good pocket money. Yeah, good pocket money. And, but, yeah. The season went really well and you know, we managed to, um, to play in the Premiership. One of the many staggering statistics from your career is the number of times you're on the MCG. Do you know how many? Um, oh, I'd definitely be over, over 100. It's well over, it's 186. Yeah. Now that's a career in itself and that's how many games you played at the G. Uh, and a win rate of 118 and yeah. four draws. Yeah. Uh, it, it's good to listen back to it now but I always thought the MCG, you know, my first game was there and Whenever you get the chance to run out in the MCG and there's more than you know sixty or seventy thousand people there, it's a pretty special feeling. And um, lucky enough at Essendon, you know, we did that numerous times and and some special memories. So you pass, you, you've satisfied with what you've done and you yeah. should be. Yeah. But there's nothing about look, I might have got another five or ten games out of it. Oh, not really five or ten games. T to you know. It's easy to say now. I would have liked probably another premiership, but mm. there's a lot of people would like another premiership. Should you have had another one? Oh, I think there was one for the taking there, 99, um, you know, even 2001, I think we're up in that, in that grand final. But, you know, as it, as it stands today, it, was, you know, it works out probably one every sort of 200 games, mm. really. Um, yeah, I'd, li I'd like another one, but, you know. Now, you went until you were 40 years and, uh, and 23 days. I even have a suspicion that had, uh, had you been eligible to play in 2016, you may have, may have even had a crack at that. Would you have? Uh, you know, I would have liked to have. Um, obviously, there was a few, you know, different situations going on there that um, that weren't ideal. So I probably felt like my body was still was still tracking okay with regard to the, the games I was playing. You know, I wasn't playing interstate a lot interstate, but I was still managing to get 15 or 16 games a year out, and they, I thought they were at reasonable type standards. So it was probably mentally really that, you know, I think my last game being against Richmond, you know, I probably thought, well, 
maybe not en enjoying it as much as I, as I had been, that um, it was probably nearly time to um, to pull the pin. You know, I'm a pretty, you know, it sounds like I'm a simple sort of person. I played footy because, you know, I, I love the game, whether it's 400 games at Essendon or, you know, it would have been 400 games at Due to Stars or Aberfeldy mm. or at, mm. at Swan Hill. You know, I mm. love footy, so it wasn't about, you know, you got paid well, that was great, but I still love the game. and. Towards the end there, it was probably getting a little bit tougher in that sense. Did, did the supplements regime, did that t uh, sour your your memories of football or your love for the game? No, I, I wouldn't say it soured it because, as I said, you know, I was, you know I'd been around Essendon since I was, you know, four or five years old mm. when, when Dad was Dad played and captain there. There's no doubt it was a tough time. It was the toughest time of my career in, in that sense. But, um, you know, I can't say it soured it because... You know, to play footy at a, at a, at a club and, and a team you've loved and grown up barracking for, you know, not only for those 18 years, but for the extra four, 23 years, mm. it, was, um, it was pretty special. So Ken Fletcher and Dustin Fletcher still hold the record for the most number of games for a father and son, 664. Big number, isn't it? Yeah, it is a big number and, um, I don't know, when you're out there playing, you know, you just play games, you just mm. string them along and... Um, and I'm a little bit different to Dad. Dad actually probably knew how many games we needed for, you know, for us to get that record. He used to t tell me, you know, we've got 54 to go or you've got 33 to go. And, and I'd really sort of, you know, you're not overly fussed at those, those things at the time. But uh, to look back on it now, to play, you know, that, that name of, you know, the Fletcher name has been mm. around Essendon for a long time. Uh, Dustin, there's another Fletcher in the wings, isn't there? You were playing league football at 17. Your boy, 17. Mason, the 17 years of age. Yeah. Where's he at in his football? Um, he's, he's, he's got a few games this year. For, he's probably about eight to ten games up at Calder, Calder Cannons in a TAC Cup competition as a bottom age kid. So he's, um, he's going OK. He's actually yeah, he's 17, so he's bottom age. And he's actually 79 kilos. And, um, and how tall? And he's about six foot six. Six, six and 79. So, yeah, and he's going all right. Well, He'll that's need... exactly what you were, isn't it? My first game, I was yeah. obviously 17 yeah. and 79 kilos. He's going OK, needs a good you know, 6, 12 months of a pre-season and, and, and some big games footy, but um, we'll see how we go in another six months. You want him to play this, isn't it? Yeah, I'd like, you know, I'd love to, you know, to keep that name going. But um, you know, I've got another younger one too, Max. He's only he's 15, you know, mm -hmm. different type, mightn't be as tall, but with a bit of luck, he'll get to six, 2, 6, 3 and, um, and go all right as well. Mm -hmm. So Coonahan so in the grand final of 93 and, and players like Ablett, you played on Ablett, in your first year? Yeah. Yeah. Who were a few of the other? Oh, you know, you know Dunstall, Lockett, yeah. you know, you're talking Peter Sumich, yeah. you know, Tony Modger at times. Alan Jakovic was another one who kicked, yep. some, kicked some big goals. And, you know, I remember sitting in, you know, Thursday night match committee meetings when, you know, Sheed said to me in front of the group, you know, you've played on, you know, Dunstall, Ablett, Modra, um, you know, you've got, you know, Peter Sumich this week or you've got, Jason Dunstall plugger this week, and you got a few laughs off the uh, off the rest of the group. But um, that's just how it went for me. I had to learn on the, you know, I never played fullback in my life. I was always full forward or centre forward as a school yep. kid. Or so I didn't take myself too serious in those early years, and it's probably good that I didn't because um, you know they were they were tough days, there's no doubt. Did you have any dialogue with people like Plugger and Gaz, those guys? Oh, there wasn't too much. Um, you know the different guys you played on. Um, every now and then you get a bit of a, you know, a bit of something out of out of Plugger or or Gary Ablett, but there wasn't too much. There wasn't too much talk, and I was happy for that. I didn't. I wasn't a really a talkative type of guy when I played. I was just trying to do my job. But I suspect you weren't going to provoke Plugger, were you? Nah, nah, not when you're 79 kilos and what he would have been <laughs> probably about 100, 110. But um, yeah, you know, he got hold of me a few times, obviously, and and even you know Gary Ablett too. He was. You know, he was tough, you know, strong footballer. Mm. So I wasn't one to try and stir the full forwards up. It didn't uh, go well. Plugger sent you over the fence one day, didn't he, at the SCG? Yeah, he did. He got me one day at, um, the, uh, up at the SCG. I was sort of paddling the ball outside, you know, from for the square. I paddled outside 50 and um, Plugger sort of, the boundaries were quite close at the, mm. at the SCG and he sort of gave me a real, real nudge and was either look up and go head first into the... Uh, into the fence or go over it and I sort of just got over the top of it and uh, I managed to cut my hand on someone's um, beer can and you can imagine the crowd were up and about and really ripping into me and um, believe it or not that that particular night um, there was a couple of couple giving me a bit of abuse a couple of rows back and um, a couple of young kids 16 and mm. 14 at the time and um, 
Mark McVeigh and Jared McVeigh <laughs> were, were the two names. They were there with their family watching the footy at the SCG, you know, being up that way. And it was probably about three or four years later that Mark was playing at, yeah. playing at Essendon. And he, did you um, remind him of it, what he might have said here? Well, he actually filled me in on the story. I oh, actually did didn't know at the time. Yeah. But um, he said to me, I remember giving it to you one day. And I sort of you know, said, oh, yeah, well, what happened there? And it was, it was the day yeah. at the uh, SCG. You were remarkably versatile. I, I was trying to work out before the difference in the height. You played on Philip Matera, the small forward for West Coast. And often the resting ruckman like Aaron Sandylands. So there's probably 40 centimetres in height between those guys. Yeah, there was. And I think that was probably why, you know, in a way, my career probably did go for so long. Because you could match up on a few of those guys. Even like, you know, Stephen Milne and, and Eddie Betts and Jeff Garlett mm. for, you know, those smaller mm. types. But, uh, yeah, you know, I used to like, most of the time, I used to like getting the resting ruckman. You, you felt like you'd get a few extra kicks down there when the resting ruckman came. But, um, you know, and, you know, I'm... I struggled against, you know, there's some players you, you look back on you struggled against. You know, Favola was one, Bradshaw was another one who was a guy. Daniel Bradshaw, Daniel yeah. Daniel Bradshaw, who yeah. people sort of, you know, maybe forget about a little bit. But Severo Rocker early on, big body. Because you're so strong. He was so yeah. strong. So there were some tough ones, obviously, early days. But, um, you know, I always thought when I played on the smaller guys that, you know, a lot of the time we used to start in front, you know, 10 metres in front. And I used to try and, you know, make them kick over the top. You know, I felt like if I could do the job there, they wouldn't get a lot of the footy. Dustin, you mentioned Daniel Bradshaw as one of the forwards that caused you a bit of concern. Clearly there is Lockett, Ablett, Dunstall, Sumich, one or two others. Yeah, Who are the lesser known players that might have worried you a bit? Oh, yeah, Bradshaw was a, was a big one. You know, he was that period from 2000 when Brisbane were coming along. I found him difficult to match up on and pretty quiet sort of guy, but used his body well, kicked goals. Um, Alan Jakovic, mm -hmm. he was one that in my early days, I reckon he kicked nine goals one on me one day. Told me about every one of them too. He was, <laughs> he was definitely one. And even guys, you know, you sort of have to think back, but Ken Kingsley played yeah. for, um, you know, Geelong yep. and I think maybe North Melbourne. He was one that, for some reason, just, you know... So I was going to ask, for some reason, why would he have troubled you? I don't know, like, he was just a, a smart fo footballer, yep. you know what I mean? And the one that we're all fascinated by, Gary. Did Gary Ablett... Uh, did you ever have a, d a detailed discussion with him on or off the ground? Oh, not really. Not really with Gary. Um, again, you know, I think he was always one that Dad was worried about him breaking me in half at mm. times, but um, I've only got one autograph in my life, and I remember driving down down that way and um, I, I had a big um, me trying to spoil actually actually Gary Ablett and um, I got him to sign to sign this um, to sign this so picture. you went to Gary with that photo yeah, yeah, yeah. went down to Geelong and um, he signed that um, that picture and, and I've still got it got it today so. the year of 2000 I mean in from where I sit that I would think that's probably your best year a premiership you played in the best team in the competition and still won the best and fairest ahead of Hurd and Lloyd, and Lloyd kicked 100 goals that year. Yeah. Um, am I right? Is that your, Would you see that as your best year? Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. I think, you know, again, you know, that year 2000 was, you know, was a special year. I think when you're driving to football games confident that you're going to win, um, it's, it's a pretty good feeling. And um, that year actually went really quickly. I think we lost the, the one game to yep. the Bulldogs yep. where yep. Terry Wallace flooded the boys back, and I think Chris Grant kicked the winning goal, but... Special year, um, not just you know for me for the footy club to only lose a one for the year. It was, you had 357 um, disposals, way back then. Usually the ball was at the other end. Yeah, I don't know. I must have kicked myself at full back a fair bit, or I must have done something. <laughs> but um, I think to be honest, I've, you know the game, you know 2000, you, you probably got freed up a little bit. You still had the big full forwards, but you managed to get up the ground, and you could you probably get a few more touches in the game. Mm. Did you tire of the responsibility of being? The, 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 almost the goalkeeper for the, the bulk of your career? Oh, I probably didn't tie. I reckon at times, you know, you spoke about, you know, the mental strength of playing yep. on the bigger guys, you know, bigger name guys. And I reckon I did that early in my career. And, and there were times when, you know, you probably, towards the end, you got, you know, a little bit more nervous, believe it or not, that you're still playing on these, these big guys. And there were times when I played off, you know, off not even on the number one forward mm. and obviously copped a bit of flack for that over the years. But, um... But that was how, how I played. I felt like I could read the game pretty well and times coming off and defending, you know, coming second man up was, was what worked for me as well. Jeff Southby sat in that chair a month ago and said that he needed a break. He just, the pressure got to him about playing fullback the entire time and he wanted to go forward. You occasionally had a run forward, didn't you? Yeah, I, I probably did in Sheeds early on. He mm. probably, he could see that and gave me a bit of a mental break from, from, full, from full back. And, um, you know, I kicked a couple of goals and, yeah, but... 
Mentally, the break, um, you know, from, say, 2010 onwards, it was not playing full-back. It was probably playing half-back flank or playing in the back pocket. That was like a mental break for me. It wasn't mm -hmm. being that one, you know, that one on the last line sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're remarkably durable, as you would want to be if you played football for 23 years. I know there was a major ankle injury you had. Uh, when was that? 94, I had a, a Rico, ankle reconstruction. Yeah, 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 and missed a lot of that season. Uh, yeah. Uh, and another time you uh, had your... Mouth rearranged, did you know? Yeah, that were probably a couple of the big ones. And I did have some injuries along the way, but, you know, I, I was one that, you know, I, I felt like I could play with, you know, I never did a calf, hamstring, quad, so I was lucky and I never did any soft tissue injuries, which is the majority of the injuries, so... But I had my teeth, you know, four teeth knocked out over at Subiaco one day. The, and The front two? Yeah, front yeah. two were, were clean out. Yeah. Uh, the, one was in the mouth guard and the other one was sort of on the way out. So uh, There was a marking contest? Yeah, marking contest against McDougal, I think, yep. from yep. West Coast and had a mouth guard in, so I had all the right. But unfortunately, had my mouth open when I was going for it and just got caught one flush. Um, off accidental? Accident, purely yep. accidental. Yep. And... Um, wasn't a good feeling, obviously, with, you know, actually split, um, cracked my gum, you know, the front front part of the gum as well. So, um, obviously came off, um, Reedy did come out to me and I think rubber... Bruce Reed, the doctor? Yeah, yep. Bruce Reed came out and um, pretty much got me off and on the way back off, you know, we, they had a look at my teeth and um, Ian Reynolds, rubber, um, as he was known, actually said there's still two teeth missing. So rubber actually ran out from the boundary line to the half forward flank and managed to find two teeth wow. in, in the um, in the middle of Subiaco. So um, so they're going back into the glass of milk. Yeah, they did. The <laughs> one of the trainers put them killer, put them back into a glass of milk. Um, did all the right things there. I was off for about five minutes when it happened for the you blood. Went back on. Went back on for probably about another 15 minutes, I think it was, and I think we got to about four or five goals down and. Lucky enough to get a knock on the back of the uh, the race where um where so I'll, then you came off came yep, off yep. knock on the back of the um the, the players dug out and it was actually the West Coast um, orthodontist really and he said um, do you need a bit of help and I pretty much nodded the head pretty quickly and said I do and we I went back with him you know just before the game ended he opened up his surgery and um, managed to. Give them a bit of a... And that's them. And that's them, yeah. They're the teeth that were strewn across Subiaco Oval Subiaco, and they're back in. Yeah, they're back in. Yeah. You know, they need a bit of work in the, yeah. next, in the next little bit. Did you bloke with Sheeds? Ah, it was excellent. Yeah, it was uh, excellent. Um, again, I'd known Sheeds since, you know, I was quite young mm. in, a, in a different, you know, in a different type of type of way. But um, I think those years of 17, 18, you know, you've obviously got your parents who you look up to and... Um, and for me, it was Kevin Sheedy because I was around that footy club for, for a long period of time and I got along well with Sheeds. You know, he never dropped me in, you know, 285 mm. games, I think it was. Did he ever yell at you? Uh, he did. Yeah, he did. Um, I think early days, probably not as, as maybe much as he should, um, but he could, read the, he could read a player really well. So, But there was no, I think, the 96 prelim final mm. loss to Swans. Mm -hmm. I remember copping a, a fair old bake that day. And a, you, but you, did, you played on Lockett that night, right? Yeah. I did for about half the game. Yeah, and Locker kicked one goal that. He also kicked the one point one that, point that, that one. put them into the grand final, but yeah. he only kicked one goal before that. Yeah. If I remember correctly, I think Plugger went into that game with a fair groin injury mm -hmm. and he probably yep. didn't do a yep. lot of running. But um, but that was one day, you know, I probably saw a side of Sheeds that was, that was he was angry. Yeah. Um, you know, Personal? Oh, yeah, probably a little bit. Um, you know, we had a few injuries. To, you know, it was when Lordy did his um, spleen. Yep. So we had a few t injuries towards the end of that one, but um, that was probably the, the most angry I've seen him as coach. You're sitting there on the, on the games table. Only three men in the history of the game have played more games than you. Boomer, Michael Tuck and Kevin Bartlett. Do you take... Does that a matter of pride for you or is that just a fact? Just... Oh, it's probably come a bit... You're proud of it now that you're finished. Um... And to see those type of guys, you know, Kevin Bartlett as a, you are, as, a, as, a young, as a young kid, um, you know, myself, probably Tucky and, and KB probably had the, the same body, body type yep. really, didn't we? Whereas Boomer was a bit small and a bit stronger. Yep. But um, yeah, I didn't carry obviously too much weight, neither did the other two, and, and they were lucky enough to play, f you know, 400 as well. You certainly never carried too much weight. Yeah. You had a problem with tripping. Mm. From the outside looking in, every time you got into trouble with the authorities, it was only with your feet that were wayward. Yeah. What, what, what caused that, do you think? Oh, I don't know. I was always, you know, I probably got into a bad habit at times. You know, you'd throw your hand out to tackle mm. and, and, you know, you wouldn't want to get steps, so your foot would sort mm. of go out with it. And, um, and I did, yeah. And it became a little bit of a, um, you know, just something I did. Um, just instinctively. Instinctive, you, you know, you sort yeah. of threw your hand yeah. out and your yeah. foot went out with it, but... 
Yeah, it got reported a few times, obviously, or quite a few times, and it cost me a few games. But you know, there's a couple. It, was, it wasn't conscious though. You weren't sort of saying, no, "I'll throw my foot out here." No, it just happened. Not really. Yeah. yeah, it didn't look good. I understand that, and it did cost me a final, the mm. final or two. That there's another time she's probably said to me, "You know, you're costing the team now, so we're going to do something about it." And you know, there are a couple of little malaise, and I think shaking the goalpost. I think yeah. copped, a, <laughs> copped a fine, but yeah. Um, yeah, there wasn't too much malice. You know, I couldn't. No, there wasn't. Yeah. What, what's the worst thing you did on a football field? Was there ever an occasion that you'd done something? that you, you felt embarrassed or that you felt you'd let yourself down? Oh, and, and maybe speaking about that, probably the one I did was, was Luke Darcy. I remember, um, I'm not sure, he probably can't remember, I think he got me in a little marking contest, nothing major, I think he got me in the nose and uh, Luke Darcy was coming out for the ball and I was sort of running back and I've sort of, you know, left the, the knee hanging out a little bit and actually need him fair and square in the, um, in the temple and I actually saw foot, footage of it not long ago and Probably something you've heard of done today. It, it's your eight to ten week. It would have been really. It was pretty. It was pretty ordinary by yeah. me, and I've never really spoken to him about it. It was probably one I do wish I'd have back because, you know, when you get hit in the face, you feel like yeah. you, you got to get them back, and that was one way I did about doing it. But yeah, that was pretty. Probably one that was a little bit ordinary. Was right? it intentional, or did it just oh, turn out to look bad? Oh, to be honest, it was probably a little bit intentional. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was probably not. Probably the right. a little bit. Yeah, not. Can the you right. be a little bit intentional? Nah, it was probably yeah. It was probably outright intentional. Really. <laughs> The supplements regime, you know I'm going to ask you about this. Where does it sit with you? What's your memory of it and how do you feel about what happened at Essendon? Um, how do I feel? I, you know, obviously if you had your time again, you know, I, prob I you know, probably would have asked maybe more questions or I, um, you know, I, I may have done something different. Um, how does it sit now? I'm sort of, obviously I'm pretty happy that uh, the whole situation's over and you can and Essendon can get on with it as a club and, and I can get on, you know, with, with, I, with what I do now. Um, were you uh, offended to have been one of the 34 that was suspended for 2016? Um, offended, you know, probably disappointed really. Um, you know, and I think there was, there's no doubt there were mis mistakes made by, you know, by different people and different, you know, different, um, you know, how do you tell someone when they asked me the first question I got asked in my in my interview was you know I think there was I had something like 42 needles um, um, every time I went I had my needle and um, and as players you know we thought it had been cleared off on by WADA, Asada mm. the supplements we were taking so I didn't really have a feel for it and every time I had a needle with Stephen Dank I'd sit in his office and and I'd speak about you know what I was getting. Mm. And in terms of what? In terms of asking what, what the substance was? Yeah. yeah. And never once did I, you know, think that it was something that was untoward. Mm. Um, and he was quite a smart man. Dan, believe it or not, actually got on reasonably well with Stephen Dang. Mm. But um, you just look back on it now and you probably think, why couldn't he have, he have just come out and just said, you know, this is what they had, mm. this is what it was, you know, it's all clear. Um, but do you believe that there were any performance enhancing substances in those needles? Um, no, I, d I don't. You don't? Personally, I don't. Um, again, um, when I went down there, I was always, you know, thought that what he was telling me was, was what I was getting and nothing was, was, was wrong. Did you think it was odd that you were taken off-site and had 42 needles? Did you... Yeah, I, when I say yeah, off-site, I think, you know, the off-site ones I had um, was, I think I only had maybe one injection off site. Oh, only one. That and was for me, that was club? yeah, that yep. was after okay. the um the colony game. And even the other ones we did have was was more um was like a saline drip that mm -hmm. we had you know, across the road from the footy club. So that was that one and that's just your salts and that going mm. into your body. So I personally only had one off site. I'm not sure I'm not sure. Did you was, did you talk you as players, did you talk amongst yourselves about what was happening? Yeah, we did. And, you know, the leadership regroup we had at the time and you know, when we sat down in the in that auditorium and went through what we were having, um, you know, we obviously you know, made sure as players you taught, you know, WADA, Asada, and the AFL, you, you need to be ticked off on by all those parties, and and we thought it had or or it was. So, um, but we used to talk talk about it as players. Um, in what in what sense you, that you were a comfortable with it or b what's going on here and we're not sure? Yeah, ninety percent of the time we were believe it or not we were sort of comfortable with it. You know, there was the odd time that you know someone would come up and say, oh you know, you need to go down and have your injection and, you know, I'd already had one that morning with regard to what it was. So I, sometimes I thought that was a little bit odd or someone wasn't, you know, on the right page with, mm -hmm. with that. Um, you know, did they hurt? You know, there were times when, you know, maybe they did hurt a little bit 
and, and there was a bit of a feeling of, of numbness or whatever it was. But I remember we had one meeting and we were probably a little bit confused with some of the words that were mentioned on the, mm. on the board. So as players, mm. We, mm. we came back in and, and went over it again. But, yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, it was tough. There's no, and, you know, the relationships, you know, for different people that it's wrecked, um, you know, it was hard, obviously hard for the footy club for those time, hard for the individual. And, and nearly three and a half, four years. Mm. It, it's a long time. Did you lose any friends over that program? Oh, no, not, nah, not really. Um, you know, I'm, as I said, I'm pretty easy going. You are, yeah. yeah I, you know, everyone I still speak to, whether it's whoever was there at the time, I'm still, I'm still friends with. How's your relationship with Hurdy? Yeah, we've got a good relationship, yep. yeah. Um, you know, lucky enough to go away with him about, about three or four weeks ago. We went down to Tasmania and, and had a function down there. But, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, I just want him to be healthy mm. and and, mm. and him and his family to you know to I'm not sure if move on's the right word, but um, to see all to, to see them mm. all well and, and develop. Where do you think he's at? Um, I think he's in in the best best spot he's been the last um, the last probably sort of five or six weeks. Mm. What are you What are you doing with yourself? I, I'm, I'm I must say I'm genuinely surprised that you're not an assistant coach somewhere, principally at Essendon, but if not there, somewhere else. Yeah. You know, I'd love to be, to be honest, you know, back at Essendon helping their, um, you know, some of their defenders or, you know, even their juniors, you know, I want to say juniors, the, the young the guys coming blokes, through yeah, because yeah. I always, you know, when I was starting, I always looked at, you know, I always, always really learn off, off people above me. But I do a little bit of off-field stuff with Essendon, which, uh, which I enjoy. Um, what's, that, what's that mean? You know, a lot with the, the different coterie groups and the, and the sponsors and, and the membership. Yeah. So um, I've got quite... So that's not a teaching role, though, is no, it? No, that's just no. pure off-field stuff, so yeah. no, nothing to do with teaching. I'm lucky enough to be still involved at, at Essendon Grammar, where I went to school in the, in the school, um, in the AGSV competition. So um, I help with their footy program, which I really enjoy. That's kids mainly from year seven to ten. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the first um, I help out a little bit with um, with the first and, and even tennis coaching. I've At got, Geelong Grammar, yeah, Geelong yeah. Grammar. So um, Mark Shepherd, who's um, a good mate of mine, has been coaching down there for well, for some thirty years. So uh, we go down there on a Wednesday and and do a good job down there with the kids. And, and you I weren't bad it. with the racket in your hand, were you? Yeah, I love tennis. Yeah. Um, Early days, yeah. I was I played a lot of tennis. You know, you not and Chris much. Anstey played doubles yeah, together. Yeah, Chris Anstey, we played uh, doubles. You can imagine two guys, six <laughs> foot five and, and seven foot, turning up to play against you know some under under fourteens. It was we had to just turn up sometimes and we win the game. But you know, played against some good players in, in Mark Philippoustis mm. and Andrew Willey and you know a good mate of mine, Joe Siriani, yep. who played in in three straight. Were you were you at their level at that time at fifteen? Um, I was probably just under under those guys. Yeah. Um, you know, I did beat. I think I did beat all of those guys, but um, they were probably, you know, a little bit next level. I think, mm. you know, tennis and golf, I think you've got to be next level to, mm -hmm. be, um, to be making it at the, um, at the top in the world. It's a brilliant career. I mean, you're the longest serving player in the history of the game, one of four blokes at 400. And I think, as Kevin Sheedy has always said, no one was more efficient and reliable than Dustin Fletcher. Great career, mate. Well done. Thanks, mate.